And we're on. Hey, Sean. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, so happy you could tune in for our HostGator Facebook Live event. Um, I've got a guest today, uh, Sean Dundon. Sean, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Thank you, Jana. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Dundon. Um, I'm the head of product here at HostGator. Um, my background's in web development, systems administration. So really happy to meet with you all today. Awesome. So today, Sean and I are going to talk about web hosting. And we're going to address um, you know, what web hosting is, what you get with your web hosting package, and a few other uh, common questions that come up when someone's looking to get um, into website building. So um, Sean, I'm just going to jump in. When someone is looking to start a website or get online, you know, different terms come up, web hosting, domain, websites. Can you just give us a quick rundown of what some of these terms mean? Yeah, absolutely. I think especially common is you know between websites, domains, and hosting. There's a lot of confusion there, and they overlap in a lot of ways. So uh, the simple way to think about it is probably with your domain being kind of like a phone number. It tells people where to reach you. It's easy to memorize, um, but it doesn't actually have anything else aside from that. Hosting, uh, on the other hand, is basically like renting a computer at its at its most basic form, and then the website is what sits on that hosting server when the domain is pointed to it. So a lot of times you'll hear the phrase DNS being thrown around. DNS is what lets you point your domain to a hosting server to provide a website. Okay, so um, who actually would need web hosting? Anyone who wants to have a web presence should likely consider web hosting. Generally these days there are two primary solutions that people look at. One of them is a website builder, such as the, the Gator Builder that we offer. Um, there are a number of others out there as well. Those generally are a bit simpler to start off with, but long term they can be a little more limiting because you're locked into one specific software. Web hosting provides a lot more flexibility to use different types of software. WordPress is a common one uh, a lot of people have heard of. There are others as well. Drupal is a big one. Uh, PrestaShop for people who want to run an e-commerce site. So web hosting is more helpful there. It also often can allow you to host multiple websites, whereas builders might be an additional fee for each one. So as you grow, you're looking for more flexibility, or if in the beginning you're not really sure what you're looking for, hosting can be a great option for that. Awesome. So, um, so you mentioned domains earlier. So someone obviously needs a domain, uh, which is going to tell everybody how to get to their website. But if I buy a domain, does that mean that I automatically have hosting? No, not necessarily. Some people do provide that and some people don't. For instance, HostGator will provide a domain transfer if you already have one and you're moving hosting here. It can be a lot easier to have them with the same provider. But a lot of times you think of your, your phone number or your domain and your hosting similar to your phone number and your cell phone provider. So you may change cell phone providers, but you still want to keep that phone number. Uh, it's very similar with domains and hosting. They are often sold separately. And that's a lot of times because your business grows, your needs may change, your hosting may change, but you'll already have that domain and you'll want to keep it. Awesome. So if someone is just starting out, uh, maybe just wants to get a simple blog or website up. Uh, do you think a basic hosting package would be enough? Yeah, so generally they, we talk about three different kinds of hosting these days. Uh, one of them is shared hosting. That's most commonly the, the right place for people to start off at. Uh, it's a very large server optimized for web hosting for websites specifically. There are also dedicated offerings. So a dedicated server would be you have a, a giant server allocated just to yourself for your site. It can be a little more expensive, but it can be very useful if you have a large site, uh, e-commerce or something like that, and you want to make sure that it's uh, configured the way that you like it or your team would like it. And then finally, you'll hear a lot about cloud hosting, which takes that to another level. So if you need to be able to dramatically scale your resources uh, for international events or you know for high demand traffic days that can be useful but is far more complicated so shared hosting is generally where I'd say the best place to start is there's a very low barrier to entry there's a lot of options for getting set up um, and there tends to be a lot of support it's very very easy to get started with there are a lot of resources online so yeah I, I would generally recommend shared hosting for people who are just getting into it the first time or don't have a firm understanding of their needs yet okay so so as a beginner 
um, if they started a share hosting package, uh, what would come with that and what options might someone need to consider? Yeah. So obviously the first and most useful thing that you're going to want with a shared hosting package is the ability to install different website software. We talked about WordPress a little, and that's a very common one. I mentioned that there are a couple others that people look to like Drumlin, uh, or Joomla or Drupal or Press to Shop. And so it's very useful to have an easy way to install that software. There are a few other services that are generally provided with shared hosting. Email is a very common one. Um, you'll see that either hosted through the hosting provider themselves, or a lot of times they may have partnerships with people like Google or Microsoft, et cetera. But email is another common one. Um, you'll see some features oriented towards maybe custom developers. If you have a program, who create a programmer who created your website for you, there'll be ways for them to upload that instead. Um, and then finally, you'll see that there's generally a lot of technical support and service provided to help you get up and running quickly. If you just have questions, you're not sure where to start, or if you're looking to you know, make sure that you get your website onto the top page of Google, things like that. So yeah. Everybody wants the top Google spot. Everything uh, else. So another question, you um, so when you're looking at shared hosting, I understand that that means there could be multiple customers or multiple websites on the same server. Um, is there any security issues with that? Yeah, that's that is a common concern. And so the the value of shared hosting is that you know we can have a really strong server. Um, you can make sure that your site is up and it's performing quickly, even if you don't have the resources, you know, to spend hundreds of dollars a month on that. With a major hosting provider, you should be able to be very confident in the security of that system. Uh, a lot of effort is put into making sure that all of the software is up to date, maintaining close relationships with upstream vendors for patches and things like that if vulnerabilities are discovered, monitoring traffic, making sure that in the event of any abuse or anything like that, it's addressed immediately. But ultimately, the most important thing for website security is keeping your software up to date. So if you have something like WordPress, uh, there's an option these days. You can enable automatic updates. That'll go a long way towards keeping your website secure. And then the most important thing, as always, for computers is resetting your password regularly and making sure it's difficult not reusing them. That'll go a very long way. The old password trick. So um, we, we've touched on a few things. It sounds like there are different hosting options, and so it's important to find out uh, the right hosting for the kind of website you want to build. Uh, that depends on your, obviously, technical skills, your budget, the goals, what you want to do with your website. Um, and, you know, web hosting is a pretty broad topic. We just touched on a few issues here. So um, we've got a lot more great information about hosting, um, how to find a domain, what it takes to get your website up and running. I'll put a couple of links in the comments to some blogs and other information on the website. Sean, is there anything else you think we missed? No, that's it. Um, I think you know there's there's a ton to talk about, as you mentioned, uh, especially as you get started and you understand more and more. But I'm glad we could start off with something pretty straightforward. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful, and we're always help, happy to answer more questions. I I love talking about web hosting. So absolutely, um, we'll, we'll we'll get you on for another conversation. I'm sure, like you said, there's so much more to talk about. Um, great. So. Uh, if there are any questions that the audience has, if you want to put the questions in the comments, we will definitely try to get back to you with some answers. Um, check out HostGator.com for information that we have there. And uh, give us your feedback on whether this was helpful. We would love suggestions for topics we can cover in the future as well. And I guess we'll say goodbye now. Thanks a lot, Sean. I appreciate you joining. Thank you. Bye, everybody.